Hey everyone, this is Mr. Everything, and today I wanted to do an unboxing and somewhat of a review, it's not going to be technical, of this uh, Channel Master Amplified Splitter. Uh, to make a long story short, uh, I'm just using a simple flat pano antenna, and I've used it since 2012. Somehow it picks up almost all the stations, but the repack, you know, kind of messed things up. I get stations I used to not get. And then a few that I used to, I don't get anymore. And uh, I started splitting out into a living room because no other room in, in this apartment picks up uh, with any, any antenna I've ever bought. So I just decided I would run it into there and I'm just using a regular um, non-powered splitter just to see if it would work and it did. But a few stations I just barely get don't pick up all the time. So I'm hoping that this will resolve that. And this was about I think $31 from Channel Master on eBay, which uh, is a pretty decent price. This is open box, but you can see nothing really on here. It's, I'm guessing it's probably just like someone bought it and they either didn't get the right amount of ports or it didn't work, so they just sent it back. And by it didn't work, I just mean like they expected it to do something it wasn't made for doing. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you what I'm picking up. It's not going to be like an overly uh, specific test, just see if those channels pick up without the uh, splitter, the amplified splitter, and then hook it up, plug it in, and see if it uh, picks those up with it. I've been wanting one of these since I uh, started using a regular splitter about last year. I just need two ports because I'm only splitting it once. And on top of that, I think you get a higher dB gain for just um, splitting the signal twice. But I don't know if there's some, a thing such as too much gain because you can see that's an 11 dB increase. And I think the non-powered one's at negative four. So if, I'm, if you're losing four by splitting it and you're powering it to 11, I guess that'd be a gain of seven. I'm not sure, I'm not good at math, but I'm not sure if that's how it comes out. But uh, you could get an eight port, but then you'd want to terminate all the extras because sometimes you'll find these cheaper because uh, I guess the four and the eight are probably more common for most people. But for me, I found a two, so that's what I'm gonna use. much bigger than just the regular splitter. I mean, if you're watching a video like this, you obviously know what those look like, those old school ones that aren't powered. I think this is a six feet cable. And where I have this all routed, I don't need that. So I'm not sure if this is just the standard coax cable or if it's uh, something different because it runs power through it. So I don't know if you could just cut it and then just re-crimp that on, or I guess this one's a little bit different, but uh, I don't know, I'd probably just tie it up, but I would just be curious in the comments and for anyone else, if someone knows, can you just use any of these, cut it to a different length if you wanted. Almost feels like ceramic or porcelain or something. I guess that's just to make it weatherproof, but in my case it'll be used indoors. So. And again, this unique power cable that uses the coax. And again, I think PCT actually manufactures these and just channel master distributes them so either of these are be fine i've seen some cheap ones on ebay but i mean they're 30 dollars. that's when you're not paying for cable it's a one-time thing i would just get the name brand get a channel master or a pct uh, next i'll switch to my tv with the unpowered splitter and see what we can pick up and then hook it up and uh, try it again so when the packaging that i missed was this i don't know if anything here's really those are those different. That's like a single amplifier uh, splitter for two, four, and eight. And it says, uh, what, 90 day warranty? That's not very good. But, I mean, if it's going to break, uh, I guess maybe aside from like a power surge or something, it'd probably happen within the first 90 days if it's defective to begin with. 
but uh, there's that. Okay, so again, this is the way I've been using it. Prior to this, I went uh, from the RCA flat panel, I think it's about a six foot cord, into the amplifier, and then it's like probably another six foot or four feet. So there is a splice there, the, the butt joint thing. Now it's going into the splitter and on another six foot or something to my TV, and then probably, I don't know, maybe 50 feet into the living room. So this is just what I get. Uh, that was two. These all come in. Now these channels are all repacked from last year, so it kind of changed things. The 16 sometimes is iffy for me. 19 is a VHF station. This is not a VHF antenna, but since it does pick up, I'm thinking, because it's probably just I'm losing it through the split cable, so maybe with the amplification I can get that. I don't really care. Again, it's not a, it's a VHF station, so if I don't get it, it's not a big deal. I really don't want to watch it, and I'm not going to buy an antenna with the VHF element for a station I'm not going to watch. Obviously, if you pick those stations up, you're going to pick up the substations. Now, 22. Uh, this one, since the repack, usually doesn't come in, as you can see. And uh, I want to point out also that uh, this TV is in uh, Samsung, and the TV in the living room is an LG. And it seems like LGs have better tuners in it because it'll pick up 19 and it won't pixelate. Now, when 19 won't come in, it won't pick it up at all. But when it's pixelating on this TV, it'll probably just pick up altogether. So it must be a better tuner in the LGs because I had an LG previously, and it also was very good. So uh, this station comes in pretty good, and this one doesn't come in as good since the repack. But you can see a lot of these are. Most of them are just fine, and there's a few border lines, and I'm hoping that just the amplifier will keep those, because if I'm picking them up that well, I'd rather try this route before I maybe decide to get a better antenna. Now this probably won't matter, but this is how mine is set up just like that. This one's going to take up more space, so it might be a little bit harder for me to tuck it away, but I don't think it really matters, but that's where I'm going to try and do this at. I finally got this uh, put in here. It took me actually quite a while, probably almost an hour, but it's kind of cramped. I didn't want to move my whole TV stand out. Uh, this this um, power cord is just so thick and sturdy and stiff. I know that, that's real funny, but uh, I guess that's a sign of a good cable, but it makes it really hard to manage. Now, if you're running it for six feet, it's just fine, but I mean, my, I have a power strip right there because this is obviously like low voltage stuff. There's no safety issues here, but it's it's way too big for that. It would probably be ideal to trim it down if you can do that, or if you just have a shorter one on hand. But I pretty much put it in the same spot. Zip, or a, even a twist tie just holds it. I mean, plus the weight of the other wires kind of keep it in place. But uh, as long as I don't have any trouble, I mean, I really don't come back here anymore. I just kind of store old game cases and stuff. And uh, you could always take the uh, twist tie out and move it. But it, uh, you do have that um, green LED indicator, and there's one on the power supply. Uh, so far, everything seems to be uh, working, and I'm sure you know once once I put everything back, I'll forget about it that it's even there. And for anyone that might care, this is the old splitter that I was using that worked pretty good. It really didn't have any trouble until the repack, so it doesn't hurt to have a better one. But you can see this is a negative four dp. It doesn't say negative, but it obviously is because it's not powered. And again, it's just a two-way splitter. The only thing it's, you know, it's all metal or aluminum or something. And it has, you know, it's not going to break. And it's nice and small. It doesn't take up any space compared to the powered one. But uh, there you go. That's probably what the, if you have one of these, you might want to get the powered one. There might be some situations where this will be okay. And it did kind of work for me, but that's what you have here okay so uh, everything's hooked up and I'm just gonna go through again I mean most of these stations weren't affected anyway but everything that was coming in is still coming in
again, you can see that uh, 19, again, it's a VHF station. I don't expect it to come in. It usually does come in in the mornings, but uh, it would, it would, I don't really even care. Sometimes I just like to use the guide to see what's in, and at least it pulls the, the guide in compared to before it would just never even pick it up. So I don't really care, though. I don't really watch that station. And I also don't get uh, PBS because that's a VHF station, but I haven't got that in years. Uh, this one comes in and out. I had been watching it, had it on for probably an hour, and it worked, and now it doesn't. So I'm not sure how much of an improvement there is here. And I've noticed that too. Sometimes if you just leave the station and come back, it'll seem to find it better. And uh, I had it on while I was uh, finishing up my wiring, and uh, there was a few little interruptions, some slight interference, but it's much better than what it was. And it's, it's so you know, arbitrary though because uh, this is like what March so this is always a big time from spring to summer where the atmosphere changes that's usually when I'll gain or lose stations and again with the repack it's just so hard to know what the differences are and you can see so um, I'm not going to rescan because on Samsung's you, you you have to like lose everything and compared to the LG, which you can tune each station manually, which I like. And speaking of the LG, I went through and looked at the, because that one actually gives you a signal meter built into the TV tuner. And that one, I noticed all stations were between 55% and 70. Most averaged about 60. Some of the better ones were like 64 to 67. And that's really disappointing because I thought years ago when I had an LG TV in this room, that my signals were usually 70 and then 80 for maybe a few really good stations. Now, again, they're all 60, although the signal quality is at 100%. So I guess as long as there's no um, breaking in that, you don't get the interference. It's Again, it's hard to say because of the repack, everything's different, so maybe all those stations are lower powered. I'm about 40 miles away. Most stations are broadcast from Pittsburgh. Some are from Greensburg, and uh, I'm not sure. Again, I just have a flat panel. It's not even really aim toward anything. I just put it to where it was on the wall and that, that seems to be the best spot so I didn't really even try and aim it. It just that's where it seems to work. You can see it does improve some but I think the best thing to do would be to buy a, a better antenna and now at least I'm set so if I do want to get a better antenna with the VHF element it's not a huge difference but I think it'll pertain best to your situation if you run a splitter or you have a really long cable throw and it used to come in and now stations aren't, this might be enough to help. You can see it did help uh, the one station come in a bit better. And things vary, so uh, some days, it, all summer, it might work perfectly or it might not come in at all. But it is a little bit better and for the price, I mean a cheap splitter if you don't have one is 5 to $10. So getting the $30 one, I don't see too much of a problem. I don't think it will use too much uh, power either. So. Um, kind of just what I can show you there. At least you can see what it's like, uh, the refurbished one or the open box. It looked just about new, so I'm happy with it. It'll get the job done. Uh, I'm not that big into TV anymore, but at least it's a one-time thing and you can always sell it. A lot of antenna stuff seems to retain its value. So there you have it. Hopefully that helped. Uh, thanks for watching and to see me in the next one. Have a good one.